All right, so in this one, we're going to go over rendering on a white psych wall, white studio. So here I have this Ferrari, and it's a obnoxious looking car. I think it's going to look awesome. It's going to be it's going to be fun to uh, render. So what we have, we have the car sitting in a psych wall, um, just like the other tutorials. Very simple model of a psych wall. So we're going to start creating the material. So we have a white psych. We'll name this psych wall. Then for Right now, I am going to create a temporary light source while we dial in this cycle. So I'm just going to create a big overhead light, like so. Put it above the studio, make it 100, done. So this is what I'm going to do. I want my floor to have kind of like a reflective, grungy property and everything else being smooth. Because if you think about this, if you're in a studio and you're driving cars around in and out, they'll have some wear and tear. So I'm going to have a very material. I'm going to make it a V-Ray blend. I'm going to keep my base. So there we go. This is our background psych wall. Now we're going to do the ground. So what we'll do is another V-Ray material. And actually, let's just copy this one right down here. Copy. Then we'll name this psych wall ground. And now what we're going to do is make this color black. For the map, we're going to do V-Ray distance text. So right here, we're going to add and select this box. All I did was I created a box. I went to object properties, unchecked renderable, display as box. So if you want to take a look at what it looks like, it's just barely penetrating through the psych wall enough to be a solid override. And then when I do it like this, I just don't see it in my viewport, but here's my reference. Now, what I'm going to do is far color, make it black, near color white, solid fill white. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to have a uh, easy gradient going from a solid floor to transitioning to the other material, which is our psych wall material. And instead of having to do a, like a map or whatever, I'm just using distance text. I use this for alphas all the time. So to test this, what we'll do is copy this and just make it something obnoxious like a yellow. Turn on V-Ray frame buffer. As you can see, I was already doing a test prior to starting this tutorial to make sure it's going to work. So here we go. Here's our ground. There's our white studio. And what we want to do now is uh, fix this and blend it better. So all we have to do is for distance, just increase it. 85. All right. So I like this. I like the way that looks. It's nice and clean. So now I'm going to go back to the ground, paste the, uh, the white floor we had. All right. So first things first. Right now, this is already feeling pretty natural. We have a white car in a white studio. Of course, there's not really any sexy lighting to it, but it is realistic. So what we'll do is go down to the light and just tone it down. I just want to make sure our floor is seamless and that's good. All right. So what I want to do is I want to add a little reflection to this ground. So we'll do it like this. There we go. Then we'll add a little bit of diffusion. 0.8. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a dirty map into here. So I'm going to do a V-Ray triplanar text. And actually, no. For this one, I'm going to do a V-Ray bitmap. Ever since they included, introduced this, I've been really digging this. So what I'll do is add a UV map to this in the Y. Just do like 5 feet by 5 feet. There we go. So now I'm just going to load a, uh, a grungy map. So I just have a bunch of different maps that I've collected throughout the years. So let's see, I'm loading it up on my other monitor and it's about to go in. All right. So as you can see, we loaded in a dirty map. There we go. And now I am going to go to mapping source and add a V-Ray randomizer. And this is going to make it scatter randomly so you don't see tiling. All right. That's what I want. Now what I'll probably go and do, add some contrast to the map so that way it's more on and off. So here's our map. And I'll just enable color correction. Go to curves. Darken this like that. Brighten this. There we go. And what I also will do is change the scale of it. So we get some large and small variations. Like so. 
All right. And then going back, I will change the uh, the blend amount to like 30. 50. 40. Make this 0.9 so we get some of that reflection back into here. All right, so before I do anything else, I'm just going to start kind of experimenting and see what we have going for us. So let's start the lighting stage. I'm going to turn this light off. So I love the uh, the details the car has. I like this little wing it has. The mirrors are tall. So what's going to happen is if we have a directional light source, it's going to create some cool looking shadows. So that's going to be the first thing. I'm going to create a little strobe light targeting the uh, the car. There we go. And then I'm going to position it right around here. So aim it down at the car and change this to watts and make it about 500. Now what I'm going to do is turn on some directionality. So 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Adjust the light placement some. So we get some fun looking shadows. So there we go, that's looking pretty cool. All right, now the next thing is what we want to do is take a look at the background. See this? If you uh, if you look closely, you get this weird line. And that's just a bizarre clipping element from the light. To fix this, go to sampling for cutoff, make it zero, and there we go, problem solved. So that's that. Now what I want to do is take a look, turn on lens effects, and see if we get a cool looking ping shimmer, which we do. Tone it down. All right. So this is our base. Now make sure this is named Psych. Yep. Now what we're going to do is throw another light source into the Psych wall. And what we want to do is just start adding some shape to the background. So I'm going to create a hot light. Put it kind of back here. Targeted. Aim it at the background. Select the light. See what watts does. So 500, 2000. There we go. Select the light. 6000. And so here I'm just kind of aiming it at the background and letting the GI do its thing. So it's just a little bounce action. All right. Now what I will do is let's see here. I'm just changing this to the way it blends. All right. And then the grunge map, maybe we'll change the scale of this to like two and two. Get a little more detail out of that, like so. There we go. All right. So we have a little highlight happening here. This area is kind of dead, so we'll copy this light and bring it over on this side. So copy. What we're going to do is we're going to position it behind the car. Make sure it's invisible. Cut off set to zero because I don't want any weird things happening with my shadows. Same thing with that light. Select this light source. Target. Put it back here. Aim it a little higher. Maybe turn on some directionality. So if you were to put barn doors on the light. And what I want to do is kind of throw it into this corner like that. All right. And then, I mean, you could retouch that out. Or what you can do is just raise this light into something that you honestly would have a hard time doing in real life. But we could just do it like this in CG. All right. So that ground might be a lot of wear and tear so 
I'll just change this to like 50. And just to see what we have. So this weird line is just naturally happening from the psych wall and it's kind of bothering me. So I might actually go and remodel the psych wall real quick because I don't I don't like this and I don't want to deal with it in Photoshop and having to retouch it. So I'll just quickly fix this. So so I'm just creating like a L shape, like so. Yeah, let's see what, nope, that's not gonna do it. So there's that, do the same thing up here. I can extrude that. normal turn on turbo smooth I just want to see what that's going to do so that looks like it'll be a much smoother gradient than that so that's what I'm going to go with so what we'll do is go extend it even more so negative 100 all right now what I'll do is before that turbo smooth Let's see here what we have happening. All right, so this is as simple as it is. So what I'm gonna try to do is add a symmetry modifier. Make sure it's in this direction. Turn angle snap and I'm just rotating it 45 degrees, like so. Let's see, make sure there's, all right. So as you can see, we got some weird stuff happening. So let's see what will fix that. So if we change this to like three, there we go. That fixes it. Then we'll do another symmetry on top of that one. And make it three again. And what we'll do is we'll turn off Turbo Smooth because you don't want to blend in edges. You want to keep the shape. So, all right. So, that's feeling good. We kind of have a little psych wall thing happening. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is go to Edit Poly and go in, remove those vertices, remove these, clean it up a little bit, make sure there's nothing else that's weird happening. Take a look at the Turbo Smooth wireframe. So, the wireframe is looking good. All right. Go back. Select these edges, drag them out, connect them. All right, psych wall number two is probably going to be better than number one. So go in, rotate it like so. I am going to apply the same material to it. What we have to do is make sure it's grounded. So there's two ways of doing that. You can manually do it, or what you can do is go in, select this, center pivot point and now do zero now it's perfectly grounded all right so just to see the car is sitting on the ground perfect all right and last but not least go in select this box since this is our alpha for the psych wall I'm just extend it out and now let's press play and take a look at what this line is looking like hopefully now it looks a lot better there we go so as you can see, that little remodel fixed that very bizarre hard edge, and now our psych wall feels much better. The transition is more appealing to the eyes, and that's what I wanted. All right, so now that we have that, we have a, we have a good-looking image. So name this psych wall. There we go. All right, so what we can do is, let's see what this will do. So I'm going to turn that off so it doesn't crash. And... We'll go in, select these edges, and close off the top of our studio. And that is just so. Let's do unhide all. There we go. So we're going to connect that, connect that. Let's take a look. So the one thing I'm going to do is add a little swift loop right there. 
as well. Let's connect it right there. So that way our corners are a little more rounded off. Let's take a preview. Look at what we have. That should kind of fix some of that issue. There we go. So now our car is uh, is getting a more neutral fill. We have a little bit of a line showing up. Oh, nope, we don't. So now we have a very natural diffused look to the whole studio. Um, what we can probably do is I'm going to turn off RT one more time. Is do something like this and then go and select this and see what would happen is, well, let's save a history. So I'm just going to add another edit poly on top of that stack. Yes, extend that up, extend that up to kind of soften that gradient a little more. Turn on preview and then we should have this transition just get a little smoother. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm finally happy with the psych wall. So going back to the actual fun stuff. So now that we have the psych wall kind of fixed up, I'm going to blast this line a little more. So let's make it like 8,000, not 86,000, but 8,000. Make it 15. All right, so that's looking, feeling good. We have a very nice hot spot right there. I'm just going to move the light back. As you can see, our car is getting a nice natural white fill right now. There's nothing really crazy happening. We still have our shadow. We have the reflections. Um, the one thing we do not have is our UV coordinates. So I'm just going to quickly add a UV map. And it was 2 by 2. So I'll just do 3 feet by 3 feet. So as you can see, we have that wear and tear back. Perfect. All right. So now we start adding more lights. Now, the, before I do that, what I'll do is I'll tone down this reflection just a bit so we get a little darker shadows because reflections take out the depth of the shadows. So there we go. Like that. And what we can do is because the directional light hero is from here, as you can see, because the shadow is falling there, we could copy this light and kick it at the side of the psych wall over here to naturally bounce more light into the car. So we'll make this one like 25,000 watts. And there we go. As you can see, again, we're just creating a natural look right now. We're not really faking anything. We're doing what you would do on location in a studio, and that's just use uh, hot lights and throw them at the psych wall. So now with that being said, the next thing is to create some fun looking car light. The way you would do it in a studio is you have like blankets, tarps, you use uh, cardboard to cut light, shape light, make it work. We don't necessarily have to do that with CG. We can, but we don't have to. So what I'm going to do is go to the front view. I'm going to create a light source. And what I will do is exclude the psych wall. I want to keep this, uh, the shadow happening. So I'm going to create a light right there. And then I'm going to position it kind of behind the car at this angle. I'm going to make sure it's invisible. I'm going to make it about 50. And I'm going to put the, uh, the gradient HDRI that I showed in my previous tutorials onto it. And if we make the light visible, you can see what's happening. So now the gradient's like that, and I don't want it actually want it neutral like this. I want it to be a uh, wet reflection. So what I'm going to do is make the diffuse double the reflection amount. And that's what I noticed for whatever reason makes these lights look better. All right, I'm going to make it invisible. And I'm just going to move this light kind of out here. And now you just kind of play with the placement of the light. I'm going to change this to local. Like so. Position it right here. That's a little too hot now. So I'll make it 300. See what that's looking like. Um, not really digging this area. So I'm just going to see what moving the light around like this is going to do. And making it a little smaller just to kind of keep it from affecting that front end. There we go. And now it's getting a little hot back here. So 100, 200, or 150. 
And what we can do, beautiful thing about V-Ray, is you could adjust the uh, diffuse a little differently than the uh, reflection. So we could still get the fun intensity of the light without having the uh, the crazy reflections. All right. Now what I want to do is throw some soft spill on the front of the car. So I'm going to go top view, create an overhead light. So place it kind of like this. And then in a real studio, you typically have a ceiling, uh, like whether it's a fabric or cardboard, whatever, and then you bounce a hot light into it. With CGI, again, we could fake things. You could do it like that and bounce the light, then have GI, longer render times and more noise, or we could fake it the way we've been faking the other stuff. So V-Ray bitmap, custom studio, and I'm just gonna load my uh, square, HDRI. There we go. I'm just going to place this something like this. And then what I'll do is lower the amount, but bump up the uh, diffuse amount just like I did on the other one. And we're going to just spread it out some more. There we go. So that's looking nice. Now what I want to do is give the front of the car some love. So I'm going to create another light on the front side of things. Go over here. Position is something like this. Do another V-Ray bitmap. I'm just going to use the sphere one this time. Now it's just a matter of finding the sweet spot for it. There we go. And it's killing our shadows, so I'm going to exclude the psych wall from this light source. I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on, because with V-Ray it doesn't respect the, uh, the update like Corona does, so you have to manually restart the RT process. Now what I want to do is give a little bit of roll to this area. So what we have to do is copy this light and move it on the back side. Like so. And what we can do is go to V-Ray Light Lister and turn off all the other lights to make sure what we're doing with this one is actually doing it properly. So the game plan is to get it to give us some fill on this back, back end. Kind of like that. And what I might do is uh, do a copy and load the uh, the square HDRI. Instance. I'm just going to position it something like this. Might actually go back to that circle one. And if we lower it some, it should just fall right into place. As you can see, now we're getting some nice uh, detail out of this fender, some shape. We're getting a little pocket here. We're showing some roll in the window glass. There we go. All right, now we're gonna go is turn all the lights back on. Here we go. Our car is starting to look nice. I'll bump that up. All right, now what I will do is I'll turn the wheels a little bit just to make it feel a little more fun. Yeah, I believe it was 10 degrees. So if we change this to view, we can see down here that was a 10. And that was a 10, perfect. And what I will do is add a little bit of camber to it. So local. And let's see. So negative 0.2. Well, I'm going to do negative 0.4. Since it's turning, it's going to dip in just a little bit more.
There we go. Nothing crazy, but just a little bit. The other thing I want to do is I want to show off some of the uh, the details we have in the front of the car down here. So again, create another light. But this time, just like the other one, exclude the psych wall. We don't want that. So I'm just going to create a long little light strip. Make sure it's invisible. And let's see what this will do. And I don't want it completely the same angle as the camera because it'll start flattening out our details. But something like this is just going to show off the, uh, the mesh a little bit better. Might throw this round gradient on it just so we have a uh, some feathering. All right. So the other thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, our alpha is pure white. I'm going to click on, um, select that object, go to V-Ray Properties, and alpha minus one. This will make it a black alpha. So that way I could adjust some tones and post on the background and brush things in how I'd like it. So there we go. That's starting to feel nice. Um, our car is feeling good. We might expose the front end just a little bit more in post. What we'll do is make sure we have an alpha for the car paint. So check, make sure your material ID channel is set to one. Now in the, uh, the render elements, I have all my alphas, my normal, the extra text I don't necessarily need but I'll just keep it just in case. All right, so now that we have that, the, uh, the last thing what we might do is throw a little bit of uh, light on the wheels. So go in, select the, the wheels, like so. So I'll just go and quickly select them, the tires as well. Make sure all the parts are selected. Let's see if I click hide. Good, it didn't crash. I'm going to actually go and save it before it crashes on me. All right, so I have that. And then uh, I'll just make a selection set name wheels. Then I'll turn off RT for now. And I definitely do not want the brakes as part of the wheels. I actually want to keep them kind of hidden and dramatic. All right, let's make sure that's it. Select the valve stuff. All right, open up our selection set, add it to the wheels layer. There we go. All right, now we're going to turn on our T again. We're going to create a light and we will include just the wheels, like so. All right, go to the front view or side view, create a little light plane, make it invisible, do targeted, just aim it at the wheels. There we go, and I just wanna see a little bit of separation between the wheel and the car and also show off the actual wheel design. So 20, nothing too crazy where it looks out of place, but enough to give it a little bit of juice. So maybe even 15. All right, I'm gonna uncheck targeted so I don't have it on. Copy that light, move it to the back wheel. There we go. And so that's looking pretty good. I'll tweak some things in post. Let me check what alphas I have. So I have my blo my car paint, have my carbon fiber. All right, so I have some of those things. The, the other thing I'll do is I'll do my windows. So I could tweak that if I wanted to. So that's number two. We have the carbon fiber. So then our glossy blacks, let's do another one for that. So that's three. Let's see our tires. We probably don't have one of those. So let's see, one, two, three is done. That's four, so this will be a five. 
like that. Our Ferrari badge is getting a little overexposed. Let's see if it's this light that's doing it. I'm just going to do something like this. So I'm just got to find the light that's blasting the Ferrari badge. It might be this one, actually. It might be all of them, actually. <laughs> So what we can do is add another render element, and it could be called uh, V-Ray Light Select. So where is it? V-Ray Light Select. And the easiest way to do this is we'll just go to click this light and add that one. And so now if we turn on our preview mode and go to V-Ray Light Select, this will show us what this light does. And then this way, I could just take that Ferrari badge and just brush in the details in post. So that way, I don't have to worry about the uh, the over overexposed thing. And so the other thing I'll do is I'll add another V-Ray Light Select. V-Ray Light Select. And name this one Shadow. And what I want is my strobe light. this light and this light the light sources that don't change directionality of this shadow so when I do preview again go to the shadow so as you can see it still kind of keeps this uh, dark and dramatic so I could just go in and brush this in later on what I might do is remove that light from the selection set let's turn this on so I think I just removed that one so we don't get any of that backside fill. So there we go. So now our shadow is a little more dramatic. So I, I like the way this is looking. So there's one shadow pass or light select pass. There's another light select pass. And everything else I'm just going to kind of leave as a base render. And just do some quick post. All right. So next thing is going to final. So 18005. Resolution I'll just do 5000. Yep. So. I'll just render this real quick, pause the uh, recording, and then we'll just retouch it. There we go. All right, so now that the render is done, we're just going to quickly uh, do the post on this. So convert it from 32-bit to 8-bit. At least that's what I'm doing because I saved it as an EXR. All right, light select. I'm going to put these two in here. So we have our light for the uh, the emblem fix. We have the light for our shadow. So put that right there. Now what we'll do, something like this. Just kind of brush it in. And I'm just doing this very quickly, just to kind of show the idea behind this. And then you could do a little more appropriately. Feather it off. Like so. Now I'm going to add a curve. Throw it on here. And just bump it up. Like that. So we have a, still a dark dramatic shadow, but a bright ground. Like so. Now I'm just going to go in, brush it off a little more, just so it feathers off. All right. Now select some of our uh, alphas, bring them in here. All right. So what we'll do is go in here, quickly magic wand that guy. So now that we have the uh, the emblem isolated, we'll go in and just brush in the details a little bit. So add a 10. All right. Throw a curve on it and just adjust the exposure a little bit. So it's brighter, but as you can see, it's not washed out. All right, perfect. 
Now what we'll do is isolate the, uh, the car paint like that. There we go. Add a curve to that. Just bump it up a bit. Darken it a hint. Now I'm going to open up the uh, the normals pass. Bring the normals in here. Uh, get rid of the background. Don't want it. All right. So color range. Select this front bumper area. Full range. Like so. And then what we'll do is again only on the sheet metal part. Just expose it like that so we have a nicely exposed front end there we go now our blue is the uh, the blacks so what we want to do is darken them a bit make make them a little more snappy like so there we go we have our windows so we'll add some some depth to the windows as well There we go. All right, multi-mat element two should have our carbon fiber in there as well as the tires. So let's go in here. Our red channel is the carbon fiber. Give the carbon fiber a little more juice, a little more snap. And then what I actually want to do is get a little more rim light on the, uh, the mirror. So I'm just going to isolate this normals, go in, color range, something like that. All right. Select that, go in, add an exposure, like so. There we go. Now I'm going to group it. I just brush it in. Right there, just so our mirror pops out. And I'll actually add a little bit from underneath as well. So, like that. I'm gonna expand it a little more. Now, do the same thing exposure. Just open it up a bit. Like that. And just quickly brush it in. There we go. Just so the mirrors separates out like so. Now what we'll probably do is open up this area a bit as well. So I'll select that. I'd like to do it more on this area. All right. Go in and add an exposure to it. Like this, nothing too crazy. And just brush it in. There we go. Now let's see what uh what we have here. So we have the glare pass. So this is gonna be a little lens flare stuff happening. There we go. So we'll throw that on top of the whole thing. Make it a screen. Brush it in like that. All right, now what we'll do too is go in, go to exposure, tone it down just a bit. And what we want to do for now is get rid of the, uh, the overexposed areas of the background. So right there. Now I'm just going to take it out. So just so we have a little bit of more uh, tone, what I will do too is add a little exposure layer to brighten it up. And then again, just quickly brush it in behind the car. I was really digging what it was doing up here, but what I'll do is I'll add another one that has a little snap to it so our shadows are dark like this. All right, I'm going to invert that one. And I'm just brushing it in. So now what I'll do, something like this, 
And then what we can do is go over here, add an exposure layer like this, and then invert it. And then this will be kind of like our glare coming from over here. And probably the best way to do this would be to uh, copy image, something like this. Blur it like so. Then open it up. Put it as a screen blend mode. And now, brush that in. So it feels like the glare's coming in from the side. So let's see. Like so, perfect. And then this side of the car, we want it dark. So I'll just go in. I'll just select this whole area. Kind of like that. Add a curve to it. Well, that was an exposure. So we'll throw a curve on there and just darken it just a bit. We'll add some contrast to it. <clears throat> All right. So we have the white on white. Now I'm just going to do this. Add a little bit of blur just to feather off the pixels. And then as always, my exposure X as the final look and feel. All right, so reset. We're gonna add a little bit of contrast, some clarity, some saturation, because we have a fun red car. We're gonna bump up the highlights. Go in and add a little bit of glow like this. There we go. I like that. That, that's nice. It's just very uh, heavenly. Now what I'll do is I'll duplicate that one. I'll go to Camera Raw Filter. And then here with Camera Raw Filter selected, I'm going to slide the clarity the other way. And as you can see, this is, this is adding a very uh, diffused look to it. And then with that done, I'm going to go in and just brush it in around the edges just to give us that heavenly fill around the edges of the car, like so. And what you could also do is one more layer, and this will be our, uh, our smoke. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of smoke like this. Then I'm going to blur it just a little bit. And then go in and brush it in very gently. Just kind of like almost like heat coming off the, uh, the psych wall floor. So nothing too crazy, but a little bit. And there we go. And that is your white studio shot and then of course I went for that overexposed look but you could tone it down and have more of those gradients visible in the uh, the psych wall or if you want what you can do is go back to the normals pass oh this is the AO I don't really care for that but we'll throw it in see what happens yeah at this stage it would have to go underneath all the effects I don't care for that but what you can do is you go to the normals, the original one. And if you want, you could go and do selection sets like this. And then darken some areas that you've already overexposed. Kind of like that. And just make sure your car is not getting affected by any of this. So that could be another option if you want to bring in those tones back. But I kind of like this overexposed look. And that is your white studio tutorial. Feel free, like, subscribe, all that BS. I don't really care if you do or not. I'm just doing this for fun. But everyone says it on YouTube, so what the hell.